Welcome to this demo of the Hocula Business Transaction Management 040 final version. Uh, the main new features in this release are the derivation of response time metrics from the business transaction fragments um, and storage of the, the fragments and the response time information in Elasticsearch um, and then an initial um, user interface uh, displaying the Kibana um, analytics dashboard. Okay, before uh, starting up the uh, service, um, this is the distribution of the business transaction management server. Um, as part of the server in the standalone data folder, there's uh, uh, configuration information. Um, what I've done is I've added two files related to the two examples that I'm going to be running. Um, the first um, example application is the runtime governance uh, order management sample. Um, so, um, as you might have seen in some of the previous demos, um, there's a configuration file um, that can provide information that's uh, specific to the business transaction. Um, so here we've given the business transaction a name. Uh, we've identified an inclusion filter to identify what business transactions relate to this, uh, this name. Um, and we've also uh, defined a set of processes which um, um, identify how we can extract relevant information um, from this business transaction. Uh, so um, there's different actions like for, um, extracting and adding content to the uh, business transaction information, um, identi cor identifying correlation information, setting properties, um, and if we also go down we can also um, identify when there's a fault and set the fault code and uh, a description. So that's for the runtime governance example and we're also going to be running uh, the Switchyard uh, multi-app demo. Um, this one we're not extracting any information so we're just basically um, looking out for um, any business transaction activity that has a URL um, that meets this uh, reg regular expression and then that will then be associated with this business transaction name. Uh, so in this case it's uh, an order request queue, um, it's a JMS queue. Okay, so um, this this window is um, the uh, the window for starting up the um, sorry this one is, is the window for starting up the business transaction server. So I'm going to start that up now. And this is on a port offset of uh, 100. Um, this window down here is the um, the um, EAP server um, that's going to be running the example applications. Um, so uh, basically just a recap of what we what we do to instrument the applications. Um, we define a, a, an environment variable called btm home, uh, so that's pointing to this uh, the 040 uh, final btm folder, which is uh, where it contains uh, some configuration files and the, the instrumentation jar. Um, so then we set the environment um, and then finally we're going to start up the server. And, and basically what the, the configuration file does is just set the Java ops environment variable. Okay, while well, that server is up and uh, getting started, um, the, uh, the user interface is um, at Ocular, uh, btm ui um, and then there's a, a, a test user of uh, JDO and password is the password, so not very secure. <laughs> so this is the uh, Kibana dashboard. Um, it's got a default layout at the moment which you can change. Um, there's no information at the moment, so nothing interesting to see. So what I'll do now is I'm going to run some example ap um, applications. Uh, so this one is the Runtime Governance Order Management Server, so I'm going to run um, an example order through. And there's a refresh cycle of 10 seconds at the moment, so within 10 seconds, right, okay, so we're starting to see some data. Uh, but just to make it more interesting, I'll put a few more transactions through. Um, I'm also going to run the uh, the Switchyard multi-app example. Um, this particular application it has two services. The first is receiving its messages through uh, from a JMS queue and then invoking a, a, a second web service. Um, so just put a few more orders through and run a few more of these. OK, 
Okay, and then the final order I'm going to put through um, has a, a schema um, a validation error. So, so you can see here it's reporting back that there's a, an invalid element name. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, focus more on the, the Kibana dashboard. Um, at the moment the time range is set for, um, for a day, so what we can do to view a particular time range um, is uh, just um, slide over the particular area. Now, it's, you can't see too much information at the moment because it's aggregating based on every minute, um, but because we're, we've done a number of transactions um, within those minutes, I'm going to change the scale um, so it looks a bit more interesting. Um, the, the green dots are, are representing consumers and the, the blue, the producers. So you can get a, an idea of uh, the perf performance of the producers and the consumers. Um, but you can add your own filters in to, to view the information um, how you wish. Um, going down the page, uh, we will have a list of the business transactions. So um, as the, uh, those transactions were being executed, the business transaction management system classified them as being e either of these type of business, business transactions. Uh, we can view the faults, so um, in, in this case at the moment um, the only fault was the, the scheme validation error, so that's shown up as a, a SOAP server error here. Um, and this uh, one shows the, the URIs, so um, so for example here's the, uh, the web service um, URIs um, and here's the Hornet queue, uh, JMS queue, so you can get an idea of the distribution. And if you want, to, if you are interested in a particular um, one of these URIs, you can then click on that, and it will focus all of the other parts of the, the dashboard um, onto that information. And if you then want to to remove that that particular filter, you can go up here and remove it, and then it returns back to viewing all of the information. And, and the same applies to um, you know any other part of the information that you see. Um, you can use the dashboard to, to focus in on specific information. So, uh, and this finally um, at the bottom shows the response time information records. Um, it will show a, a certain number um, of the most recent records. Um, if I disable the refresh cycle at the moment so that it doesn't uh, update, um, on this one you can expand it to see more information about the individual fields. Um, you can use these um, icons to either examine um, all the records that match that particular field or exclude um, records uh, that match that particular field. So it allows you to, to have finer gran granular control over what you're viewing. Um, also on the left here you can see um, other information that's potentially available to, to be uh, filtered. Um, so for example if we look at um, items here um, it gives a further breakdown of the, the different values of the items and tells you num the number of um, of those particular um, records. Um, so for example we could then focus on all of the, the transactions that were related to butter. So, um, and again if we remove that. And then, and finally, um, the, at the moment, the, the information that's been displayed relates to consumers and producers, um, but there's also information about the internal components that are being um, recorded. Um, but these, by default, have been excluded, so what we could do is disable this particular filter that's blocking those components. Um, and now you can see that there's a lot more information, um, which is basically showing you um, details of the individual components within the services themselves. Okay, um, if you have any questions, then please uh, contact us on the uh, Hawkula Dev IRC list. And if you have any uh, feature requests, ideas, or any issues if you're playing with the software, uh, then please um, raise a gyra. Thank you.